Good evening. Welcome to Tonight with Tim Modise. In the program, we look at the scourge of crime in the inner city of Joburg and also examine the problematic rise of violence against children. Welcome. It is reported that 600,000 contact crimes occurred in South Africa between 2016 and 2017. Houting has more than its fair share of these crimes, with robberies, assaults, rapes, murder and carjacking being the most common. Crime is such a daily occurrence in Joburg that many of us dread going into the city centre for fear of muggings that are a daily occurrence. Even buildings have been hijacked and the city of Joburg under Mayor Hemen Mashaba started an operation called Buyam Teto to turn things around. The struggle against crime is difficult with various law enforcement agencies stretched and in some instances basically not doing their jobs. But there are individuals and organizations who are doing their share to promote citizens and residents' safety. Two of them are here with me, the anti-crime campaigner Yusuf Abramji and the Johannesburg Metro Police Department's Wayne Mina. And gentlemen, pleasure to have you with us here on the program. Uh, let, let me start with you, uh, Yusuf. You are very active, anti-crime campaigner. You know the score. We watch your videos on social media of the muggings that take place here in Joburg, the robberies, all, all sorts of things. The CBD of Joburg is feared by a lot of residents who live around Joburg. And is that fear misplaced? Or given the reports that you've received, that definitely this is the most uh, unsafe place of Joburg? Well, I think it needs to be said that uh, Joburg CBD is no exception. Crime is a national problem. It's a global problem for that matter. But uh, I think the levels of crime in a Johannesburg CBD are indeed very, very high. We know that uh, the three Bs have become a way of life very sadly. Bullets, bodies and blood. Uh, when you look at these videos that often go viral, of muggings in the CBD especially, it does instill fear within ordinary members of the public. Mm. Um, and I mean, a number of members of the public often come to me and say, I'm not putting my foot into the CBD simply because I'm going to be mugged. We know smash and grabs are a big problem, not only in the CBD, in suburbs around Johannesburg. Uh, and I know the uh, Metro Police Department have their hands full trying to curb these crimes. Um, and I often say to them, uh, visible policing is very, very important. The more cops, the more bobbies on the beat we have, the more effective I think we will be. Well, as you said, uh, that, you know, crime is a global phenomenon and big cities will have their fair share of that as a problem. But, you know, the perception um, in Joburg, and I think even in South Africa, is that Joburg is one of the most violent cities. And, of course, statistics disprove that. But the CBD, Mr. Wayne Minar, is dreaded by so many people. They don't want to walk in the city. Yes, but I think uh, our, our current uh, chief, David Embe, uh, is, is doing a great job because uh, he's uh, placing a lot of focus on the CBD. And uh, just last month, uh, another 180 wardens have been employed to beef the, the, the numbers in the CBD. So uh, we're looking at uh, an increased number of officers doing visible policing, uh, zonal patrol, that is covering particular blocks uh, and uh, being visible, uh, looking at uh, reducing of, uh, of crime and uh, dealing with bylaws. And then we do what we call a block patrol, where the officers are on, on foot patrol. Like Yusuf says, Bobby on the beat. Yeah, Bobby on the beat. But there are notorious places. Like he, he posted recently a video of somebody being marked in is it small street mm. mall, mm. and and then near the taxi ranks, the, it seems it looks like this is where most of the stuff happens, and near the uh, the train station, near Park Station. So you can have the Bobbies on the beat, uh, but are they where they are supposed to be? You see, the uh, uh, those uh, gang uh, that committed that crime. Uh, they were arrested before. They foreign nationals. And um, what makes it very difficult with uh, this gang? They target uh, tourists. And they know the tourists don't stay to be able to give evidence. Okay. Because the tourists must go. That particular tourist was from Argentina. And the very next day, he told us he can't stay. Uh, because of the experience because of the experience yeah. he, he is going going back to Argentina mm. and unfortunately that's how those cases go 
and those uh, those that gain they know but but when you say they are foreign nationals i, sus I sus suspect there's something significant about that what is it w why do you make the point no the point is uh, we have arrest arrested them before and then we had them off the streets for a while but now they've regrouped so uh, the, and they don't target uh, local people because we are here to be able to go to court. Now, Yusuf, from your experience and the reports you get you know, from your contacts and observations you've made, what do you think is behind the muggings in the inner city in particular? Is it because of lack of uh, visible <coughs> policing or could there be other factors? Well, I think them it's a combination of problems. Wayne mentions these people were arrested before. The question needs to be asked, why were they not convicted? Why was there no follow through? And I have to ask the question, well, well done to the JMPD. Where, where is the South African Police Service? The, the law enforcement agency in South Africa uh, mandated to fight crime is the SAPS. We know the SAPS is hopelessly understaffed. Uh, we talk of the Joburg CBD. The Pretoria CBD has a similar problem, and yet we don't have the visible policing that Johannesburg has. And I think the mayor of Johannesburg, uh, Herman Mashaba, the other day uh, identified one or two of these criminal suspects uh, on his Twitter feed, uh, saying that these people need to be arrested. Take the issue of smash and grabs. I mean, when you drive down the Johannesburg CBD or a suburb of Johannesburg, we know where the hotspots are. These people keep on striking, and yet they get arrested, and they get away with it. I've raised the issue of window washer stem for many, many years. Mm. Uh, many motorists are scared to even stop at an intersection in Johannesburg, forget the CBD, because they are being harassed, especially female drivers, by these window washers. What is the JMP doing? So as much as the, JMB, the JMPD is trying, I think a lot of work still needs to be put in. And the justice system, the justice department needs to be held to account. Why do these people get arrested and well, why do they get away with it? Let's give uh, Wayne a chance to respond to that. I mean, what happened to, with, with the gang that was arrested at some point? Were they prosecuted? Uh, yes, no, they were prison? prosecuted. Yeah. They, uh, they, they got a jail sentence. Uh, so they served their jail sentence. That was around about uh, 2010, between 2009 and 2010 when they were arrested. So they served their sentence and they've come out. but. Th they don't attack local people. Uh, uh, but are they the only ones? Uh, or, or no. Also, are you suggesting that the, the criminals operate as gangs, the ones who mark people in the CBD? Yes, and then those who commit crime uh, get arrested. Now, when it comes to uh, window washing, that's a very difficult one because, uh, first of all, it's not a, a crime. So they don't get processed at the police stations. So what we do is we try and discourage them from being at, uh, at intersections. Now we've noticed another trend, is that those who want to survive uh, do it in a very nice way. They are polite, they show respect to the drivers, and they take money where the drivers offer them money. So but, but there's uh, no complaint. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I mean, are people allowed to loiter around intersections? No, they're not. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't know whether it's the bylaws... It's a bylaw infringement. Yeah, infringement yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a bylaw infringement, yeah. but uh, there's no police station that's going to process them. They are not a crime. It's not classified as a crime. In other words, it's not a serious crime. So it's a, it's a difficult one to manage as okay. police. Here, here's the point, though. People are afraid of walking the streets of the Jobek CBD specifically. And that should be a matter of concern anyway, because a lot of people use public transport, as I mentioned, the taxi ranks and the, and the train stations. So what's going to be done? What should be done? What should they know? Yusuf, from your, from your understanding, well, uh, observation, if you are a commuter who has to walk in the CBD, how do you keep safe then? Well, I think uh, we know we have a problem. We have to find solutions. I mentioned visible policing. I think the JMPD needs to work closer with the South African Police Service. They must get more proactively involved in fighting crime. Houghton Community Safety, for example, another major role player, they need to come on board. So we need all law enforcement agencies them to work hand in hand. They cannot work in isolation. JMPD will tell you, we yeah. cannot work in isolation. But, but you know, my concern with this is, is that sometimes it, it seems like it's a lost cause. You see, when we talk about crime in the CBD, it's like, well, you're talking about it because you can. 
but not much is going to happen. Have we ever gone through a period where things improved, where things changed? Then you said, because of these particular steps that the authorities took against crime, then that helped improve the situation. Tim, I think it, it, it's a well-known fact. Crime moves into phases. So you have your crime running for a few months. They run away. They come back. They try other tricks in the trade. The organized gangs go for cash and transit robberies. I mean, I had a case this weekend where a well-known photographer with some foreign visitors was walking along Nelson Mandela Bridge. They got mugged. They went to the Japanese Town Police Station. They refused to open a charge saying go to Hilbrow Police Station. They went to Hilbrow Police Station. The cops refused to open a charge saying um, there's nothing we can do. So we have serious problems with even victims of crime reporting it. We know the city has invested millions and millions of rands into CCTV cameras, yes. right, where they have 24-hour monitoning. How effective they are, perhaps uh, Wayne well, can tell us, you, uh, you, you, talking you of can technology. Tell us, and of course, uh, if you can speak a little bit on the Operation Buyam Teto, if you are achieving any of the objectives you set for yourselves. Yeah, no, look, Operation Buyam Teto was very successful because uh, we've arrested uh, thousands of suspects for various crimes. So the Buyam Teto operation is now even adopted by the SCPS uh, provincially. So it's a very successful operation, and I think we're going to continue uh, with that uh, as it is. Uh, uh, CCTV <coughs> is currently being moved uh, from, from analog to digital, so the, the, there's some processes that has to be changed, particularly the fiber optic cable, which is in the process of being changed. And uh, out of all of the 400 plus cameras, there are about 300 cameras which are working now. And uh, we have got what we call a crime reaction unit that's linked to that. But any, any word of advice, very briefly, both, both of you, starting with you, uh, Mr. Minar, that uh, uh, commuters, people who come into the CBD, what should they be aware of? How should we conduct ourselves when we walk the streets of Joburg? I think uh, what's important is uh, uh, don't uh, give opportunity for crime. Mm -hmm. uh, don't uh, show a cell phone in a public space because uh, criminals will want to have it or steal it. Uh, also keep your numbers of the police at hand uh, and also the Johannesburg Metro Police and call us immediately. If you suspect any criminal activity or see a crime from a happening, call the police, 10 one call Johannesburg Metro Police 011 375 5911. And you sir? Well, I think, uh, Tim, we have to be alert. People, don't walk with your phone. Uh, try not to walk with your phone uh, around being visible, uh, your handbags, keep them safe. Um, and I think uh, Wayne makes a very valid point. Report crime. We need mm. people to report crime. And, and as you know, as the chief ambassador of the Namola Dial Direct mm. Safety App, mm. we appeal to people to download it free of charge. So in case of an emergency, all you do is you open your app, you press one button, and thanks to GPS location, they'll be able to track you and will be able to report the crime. Uh, I don't want to send the cops here because Wayne is here, so I'm going to put but test anyway, there, the, the and they will call you the back the immediately. Whole, the, the whole process of downloading it is in Namola as in N-A-M. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, we live uh, with somebody <laughs> say uh, we're just <laughs> testing the app. Thank you for calling. Well, that's how it works, you see. So we just press the. the no, thank you very app. much. We're just testing the Namola app. And uh, if I may ask, where am I now? You are. Your current location is one. Uh, it's number four, Junction Avenue, Park Town, Johannesburg. Thank you very much for calling me. Uh, so that's how it works. I'm impressed. <laughs> and, well, and, and that is how technology surprise. works. And I think that is why the CCTV camera initiative is an important one. The yeah. Namola Dal Direct Safety yeah, yeah. App available free of charge. And I appeal to the viewers, download it. It's for your own safety. It could save your life or somebody else's Quite life. That's impressive. Uh, well, I did not even expect that. And uh, there you are. You saw the, the reaction time was very, very quick. Namola as in N for Nelly, A, M for mother. M, uh, I beg your pardon, M-O-L-A. I think it believes, I believe it means to, to get help or yes. to help. Okay, and uh, Yusuf Abramji, thank you very much. Thank and you, the anti-crime campaigner, Wayne Minar speaks on behalf of the Johannesburg Metropolis. Appreciated your time. Thank and of course, we just focused on the crime in the CBD. There are many, many issues around crime that we could talk about, but we just felt, let's zoom in on the CBD crimes. In a short while, we'll be talking about the safety of children in schools and other pl public places when we return.